أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى أهل بيته التجبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity to conduct online courses and in this case, a review of Surah Naml. Today is the last session. We'll try to cover as many verses as possible. Otherwise, no, inshallah, we will see you in the next course. We'll announce no. All of you who have registered for this course will automatically receive invitation for the next online course, inshallah. On this on, on reviewing surah, inshallah. The last time we were just closing the discussion on verse number 63, as you can see that message from 59 to 63, five verses, but then there are nine questions, right? Is Allah or the partners they ascribe to Him? No, is Allah better or the partners they ascribe to Him? And then, of course. Is he who created the heavens and the earth, sends down for you water and sky, whereby we grow delightful gardens whose trees you could never cause. What is he is there a God besides Allah? Ilahun. No, you can see clearly says, but is there a God besides Allah, right? Ilahun. No, can there be Ilah here, of course? means God, no, and Allah. So can there be a God besides Allah? Now, of course, Allah also is God, but in this case, because when we say Allah is automatically God, no? sometimes we translate it as God, that's fine, but in this case, of course, Allah is trying to prove that they have got all the different kind of gods with small g or deities, but is Allah better? Or is, is there a God? No, ilahun ma'allah, right? And this is repeated, no? Is he who made the earth and abode for you and made rivers flowing through it, set from mountains for its sea and set a barrier between the two seas? What? Is there a God besides Allah? Ilahun you Allah. Know? In other words, in all these cases, you can see by asking this question, Allah is trying to say, what your gods have created. Show us you know, the rivers and the what, mountains and the earth which your gods have created. Can you claim that this is you no know, created by them? What is there a God besides Allah? Most of them do not know. Is he who answers the call of the distress person when invokes him and removes his distress and makes his success, successors on the earth, right? This is Amman Yujibul Muttar right? What is there a God besides Allah? Little is the admonition that you take. Now little is the advice you take, right? Is he who guides you in the darkness of land and see who sends the winds and harbinger of his mercy? What is there a God besides Allah? Exalted is Allah above having any partners that they ascribe. Now, before we go to the next slides, I just want to know what, uh, uh, comment on, uh, on the words which we recite all the time. You know, I don't, don't wish to confuse, but just my observation. No? This is ayat number 62. First thing is that Allah Matabai says that here Allah says, Who is he who responds to the call of distress? Right? He says, When a person is distressed at that time, only Allah. and that's why, that's why it is, although Allah answers to everybody, but when a person who is in distress, it's quite an interesting point. He says, When a person is in distress, then his or her focus is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person is not distressed, right, when a person is in comfort, you'll find that he calls Allah. But there are also other gods and also other what, uh, forces and other powers they believe in. You know, it's quite important. You know, I always uh, say to people that one of the reasons that you find, for example, our youths, doing mockery of Islam or not saying prayers or do not value this thing is because their pockets are filled. They no, their stomach are filled, right? This wealth is rubbing you no know, against them. And as parents, be very careful. Even if Allah has blessed you with a lot of wealth, doesn't mean that you always enrich your children with those things. 
because it may harm them. Because it clearly says that this mutter here is because when a person is really distressed, difficult, his focus is really Allah, and then of course removes that kind of difficulty. So keep that in mind. The second thing, which is maybe new to you, and uh, I don't wish to confuse you, but I could not find a, 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 a tafsir nor a hadith which says that when somebody is sick, you recite this ayat. I never found, I could not find it. If some of you who are attending today, if you come across a hadith or a tafsir which says that when, when there is somebody sick, then you recite this ayat. What we know, for example, when a person is sick, then, well, can you all hear me? Somebody says that the voice is cutting off. Can you all hear me? Can the rest of you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. Perhaps, uh, no, the one who is facing the problem, you can just exit and enter again. Sound is cutting off, or really? SubhanAllah. I, I don't know what can I do. Uh, if it continues, then maybe I have to call no, in, but otherwise, no, a little bit. I'll try to, inshallah. So this verse, which we recite all the when somebody is sick. There's nothing wrong in it because it addresses, so in meaning, that is fine, as you can see. The meaning here is the meaning, as you can just read here, right? Verse number 62 is not, the meaning here clearly says that is he who answers the call of the distress when he invokes him and removes it, right? <coughs> so this is, in this case, the distress is sickness, and we are praying for the Shifa. So that is fine as far as the meaning is concerned. But keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that there is no hadith, there is no tafsir, which says that when a person is sick, you recite this verse five times, or ten times, or three times, or one time. So if you really want a person who is sick to get Shifa, then recite the duas which are prescribed. Says Suratul Ham. The hadith is so, so powerful that if, you, if it is recited 70 times over a dead person, don't be surprised that he is given life again. Or, for example, there are hadiths regarding Ayatul Kursi. If you recite Ayatul Kursi, which helps you, you know, overcome the about, uh, problem of jaundice or eye problem, right? It's mentioned. But I could not find this. So I don't want you to just be scared about it, but just keep in mind that when you, for example, are praying for somebody who is dearly sick, of course, in the community, everybody's doing it, so you'll join them because they're reciting ayat of Quran with the intention of uh, giving them shafa. But it has not been sanctioned or supported by any hadith or even any tafsir for that matter. You know, So keep this in mind that sometimes things are done in the community uh, nobody's asking where what is its origin, who started, no, who has said, which Imam has said, no, which Alim has said, no, which Mushtar has said, no. Keep that in mind. So I don't want to confuse, let's continue. So this is a place whereby then is you no, know, is he who guides, right? Is he who, uh, no, who, who guides you in the darkness of land and sea and who sends the winds as harbingers of his mercy? What is there a God besides Allah? Exalted is Allah about having any partners that they ascribe. Now this verse, exalted is Allah, right? This is very important. Why? Because when, when, for example, Allah is asking, no, ilahun ma Allah, right? Ilahun ma Allah again and again is coming to have belief in what God other than Allah is a shirk. So just to in fact you know, or to overcome that kind of thing, you can see that Allah clearly says that no, after this says no, Amani Hadikum. It says no, Ayla no Allah, Khalil Madaskun, Amani Hadikum, Fizulumat, Barul Bahakum, not the Allah, Amma Yushikun. Allah is above the Allah, Amma. So, this is very important that sometimes, for example, 
we certain th certain things which maybe mean a shirk, although we don't intend it, but it maybe mean immediately make sure that say Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem and say no, in fact, no, I believe in only Allah. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika. And that is why you for example, those of you who recite those du'as in Mathan, you find there are du'as morning and du'as recited after every du'a which is recited after no known as taqibatul mushtarika, taqibatul khasa. That means those taqibat which can be recited after any namaz and those taqibat which can be recited after specific namaz. You find in all ones, right? The discussion about Tawheed is very the The lines on Tawheed is there. In fact, Sheikh Abbas Kumi says in Mafat al Jinan, it is Mustab to recite Surah Tawheed every day, 12 times. Every day, 12 times. So keep this mind morning, for example, especially. And you don't need to be secular. You have finished your prayers. You are, for example, preparing now to get ready as you are wearing your dress, for example, or getting ready for your work. You know? or even taking care of children, making them ready, you recite and let the children also recite. Let's recite 12 times of Tawheed, no? It's very important, no? You can see Allah immediately says, you know, that no, Allah is, you no, know, above this, right? Mushrikun. This is very important that Allah is above what you, you know. Ta'ala So keep this in mind. It is a very important about, uh, uh, section in this discussion that Allah is trying to prove, okay? This we discussed last time, so I'm not going to repeat this thing because we want to cover a number of things. The style of the Holy Quran is to invite the reciters and listeners by asking numerous questions. In this passage, there are nine questions in five verses, right? Alamatabatabai says, the question in the verse is rhetorical, intended to make the audience acknowledge the truth, right? The verse number 60 only mentions one side of the comparison. The other side is omitted. And the omitted part can be inferred from the context as Rather, is he who created the heavens and the earth better or what they associate with? The underlying part is omitted, right? He's trying to say. So next four verses follow the same style. So you can see this is very powerful. Allah asks the questions. At the same time, the entire question is not there. The part is omitted. It's so obvious. You think about it, right? So keep this in mind. This is the style of the Quran. Now, again, as I said last week, and I'm not I don't want to repeat myself, this is only possible. If you recite and understand. Remember I told you that in my humble practice, now of course I'm not the one you should imitate, but in my humble practice, when I recite Quran for 11 months, from Shawwal to Shaban, I recite Quran in Arabic and also recite or read the translation and sometimes even to see to get more information about the translation if it's not clear to me, right? It's only in the month of Ramadan because there is a lot of swab of reciting Quran and it's a season of reciting Quran, and we've got so many other things to recite, du'as and fasting and other you know, what, uh, uh, commitments are there, right? So we have limited time. We go to masjid, and all this takes time, right? So then I make a point to recite Quran only, without translation. But otherwise, I do, in fact, recite translation, although I understand in many cases, although not everything, but I understand, right? So keep this in mind that this can only possible, you can only benefit from this kind of things when you understand what you are reciting. Now Allah says, أَمَّنْ يَبْدَوْ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ وَمَنْ يَرْزُكُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضَ فَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ قُلْ خَاتُوا بُرْحَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِكِينَ After all those arguments and questioning, Allah is saying that no, now it talks about khalq, right? Because creation is only for Allah. No one and no one else creates. Even if you find for them a factory makes something very beautiful, for example, a phone today is a smartphone, right? It can do so many things. Computers and things can do so many things, right? But even then, although from a small part to all these things, keep in mind that you know that is not khalq. That is a designing, that is making, that is manufacturing, right? There is invention. But not khalq. Khalq is only confined to Allah. It's Allah's quality. You know? So, aman yabda ul khalqa, thumma yu'idhu. Allah Matabat says, Tatabatabai says, yu'idhu, that means, then again gives you know, life and resurrection. Aman yarzakukum minas samai wal earth. And who, of course, you know, provides you 
from the sky and the earth, right? From the sky, of course, Allah provides what? The rain, which will you know, give what uh, earth the life, and that earth will give vegetation, right? Ailahun ma'allah. Kulhatu burhanakum in kuntum sadikin. So bring your own what uh, evidence. Try to bring, you know, provide your own evidence that you are truthful, that you have, for example, a God who has created something, right? There is a beautiful story, I don't know if I'll share with you, but very briefly, once a person took some sand, right? He just went out into the garden, took some wet sand, clay, and put in a bottle and sealed the bottle right? and kept it at the home, in his home. After a few days, he saw a few insects there. So he comes to the Imam and says, Ya Rasulullah, you are saying that only Allah creates, even I created. The Imam said, what did you create? He said, when I put this clay in this bottle, nothing was there. After two days, I just shook it and I can see these insects, right? SubhanAllah, you know, you and me would be speechless at that time, right? You could have just, for example, just said that the insect Imam doesn't tell him, oh no, for example, oh, insects was part of it, you did not see it, they were born, they know. Imam says, you created it, right? You created this in insect. Then, you know, tell me how many are male and how many are female. He could not answer. Do you see this thing? So khalq is just a, a quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also risk he gives up. No? in kuntum ta'alamun. Just give your evidence. No one in the heavens or the earth knows the unseen except Allah. Now the argument becomes even more sophisticated. As Allah is proving the heed, as I told you last time, this is a beautiful passage to talk with your students in the madrasa, to with your children who sometimes, for example, you know, are doubting about Allah and his ability. This is a beautiful passage. So it says that no, now we can see that لا يعلم من في السماوات الأرض إلا الله right? Nobody knows the ghayb except Allah. وما يشعرون أيانا يبصون Not only that, they do not are not even aware, right? When they'll be resulted. If really they were had any kind of argument, they would say, okay, the resurrection will come so and so. That's why when the Prophet and Imams were again and again, tell us when will the hour come? When will the time come? They never said. They would say Allah would know. Even for example, let's say for argument's sake, Allah might have shared with them, or Allah might be the Prophet at least, Rasulullah, right? But he never, never even no, at all tried to answer that, no, when this will come. Because this is only Allah. So Allah says, Tell us that when will the time will come for resurrection, right? <coughs> and then, in fact, this ayat is beautiful. You can see those little Arabic. You see the use of bal. Bal in Arabic means nay or rather, right? Bal in Arabic means nay. Or rather, right? You can see that Allah uses this three times within a verse. No? Nay, does their knowledge comprehend the hereafter? Do they really understand what hereafter? No. Then Allah says, Bal hum fi shakkin minna. No, rather they are in full of doubts. Not only that they do not comprehend what about the hereafter, it means have the good knowledge of your. No, 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 no. It's they are in doubts. No, there are a lot of doubts and questions. But no, 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 no. In fact, they are to it. Right? They are not only doubt, but you, know, you they are as if they, are, they don't really like. It. So you can see that, of course, this is Allah is referring to polytheists, to mushrikeen, right? But dark ilmuhum, ilmuhum there. No, their knowledge here is the polytheists. Not only the mushrikeen during the time of Rasulullah, even today, those mushrikeen, the atheists, it applies to them, right? Their comprehension rather does not reach the rather they are ignored by the hereafter. Rather they are in doubt about it. Rather they are you know blind about it. You see? So you can see how powerful this argument is. If you 
it's very you know fun and beautiful the way it's been put if anybody were to understand would definitely strongly think about it that what allah is trying to know and that's why again my point is the show when you recite do recite with the meaning you know it's very important that we should be moved by the quran right here are some of the notes no taken from almizan the origination of creation refers to its existence right is for reproduction receiving its existence after this resurrection right allah uses resurrection to argue against the mushrikeen resurrection is an accepted fact due to many deceits contained in the quran this is a very good point he says that why would allah use resurrection when they believe because just to put a point that resurrection is an accepted fact to many decisive proofs contained in the quran those of you who read so you have seen all the time and know what has been cited and and I, I will of what the past year because you can get many lectures online if you just go to youtube you'll get a lot of tafsir yasin because it's a popular surah right if you just try to uh, listen to the tafsir of the last passage right such a powerful and decisive argument again you know regarding the hereafter so that's why allah just used that right? and then allah says the yarzuku refers direction is the origination turn right because it's not only just sustenance but what allah matwa twice says that all the affairs are being directed by allah from the time a person is born or originated until in his hand this food is just sort of not an example allah is in control so khalq and tadbir that means creation and management right belongs to god allah bring your proofs that other deities can also do for others this is what hatu burhanakum bring your proof allah says if you can say for example this and this and the lord right what's the knowledge of the unseen about the time of creation is only known to allah not to gods of the imagination they don't know about it is it i said in about 10 places in the quran allah is in the quran describes allah as the knower of the unseen the alim al ghaibi alim al ghaibi we find the quran hearing him almost 10 uh, verses i could see almost there may be even more perhaps but at least what i'm sure about you can see see the use of particle bulb thrice within the verse 66 strain the argument against the polytheists with full conviction as we discussed earlier right we go to the next uh, slide now we discuss about the resurrection itself alladhina kafaru wa idha kunna wa aba'una inna lamu lamu you know you can see this is it Subhanallah one of the beauties about the Quran and I'm sure you must have noticed one of the beauties of the Quran is that Quran does not shy mentioning the arguments of the opponents you know for example they are playing you no know, let's say uh, some kind of board game you not let your opponent know about your strategies right with chess or any kind of board game you are not playing whatever your strategy is there you would not right you will try to hide your strategy here allah is not shy from not talking about their argument is forces of quran you can imagine right? because allah is not that the argument which al quran provides against their argument is strong and decisive and final right so you can see here is their argument waqad alladhina kafaru اذا كنا ترابا واباؤنا اننا لمفرجون those who disbelieve they say if we were to become dust or clay right in our, our forefathers لمفرجون are we going to be taken out from them لقد وعدنا هذا نحن واباؤنا من قبل ان هذا الا اساطير الاولين الله continues quoting them can imagine سبحان الله الله is quoting them the disbelievers their argument and he does not shy no that oh somebody is going to use later on atis are going to use these verses against no 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 so what is that they say laqad waidna hada we were promised about this thing nahnu wa abana not only we even our forefathers were promised about this thing min qablu inna hada illa asatir alawalin these are just ancient 
to fairy tales, they say. Because what about, you know, will they be life after death? They say that this is something which past prophets have said, we were told, our forefathers were told, but this is nothing but just fairy tales, right? You can see. Allah says, if you don't believe, just try to you know, travel, just try to go and visit the earth, right? Just go on a trip on Fanduru Kaifa Khan Akibal Mujameen. Just see what was the outcome of those who were disbelievers who were guilty. Not only disbelievers, but Mujrimin is guilty. You know, guilty of disbelief, guilty of disobeying the Prophet, arguing, arguing, guilty of doing a wrong. Right? So Allah says, you know, see the outcome of them. You know? Did you find them success, successful? Just go there, Fanduru. Wala tahzan alayhim. Do you see subhanAllah the beauty of Quran? Now, now Quran is changing. You can see talking to an individual, second person. And that also is a male. Do not grieve over them. What they are plotting. Who is this being this talked to? Is Rasulullah, right? Do you see? So whenever you find Quran is talking to someone in a second person directly, and that is sing, single, you know, in, in single form, the one with the address is singular, right? In that case, that is Rasulullah, the Prophet of God, right? So Allah hasn't. This shows that Prophet was worried about this kind of questions which were being put, right? SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, sometimes when you find uh, you know, people coming with a very odd questions, don't be scared, don't be grieved. No? If you know the answer, try to answer. If you know, tell them, give me time. Only uh, last uh, Sunday, uh, was it Sunday, I think, or no, I, I was attending a funeral here at the mosque, you know, and somebody came and started talking so many, one of our persons, right, started talking so many things against the prophet and said, this is what people are saying, that he made a young girl and all those things, and the words he was using, right? I said, you ask so many questions and I have to go, but these are the days I come to masjid. Why don't you come and we'll sit, right? And we'll discuss this thing. <clears throat> but don't be just put off, not at all. No. Wala tahzan alayhim. Wala takun fi daikin. Daikin that means no, you, you are constricted. No? For example, daikin that means when things are narrow. So they put you in a box whereby you cannot come out of it. You see, that is daikin. Wala takun fi daikin mimma yam kroon regarding what they are, you know, what plotting and uh, planning, right? Wa yakuluna mata hadal wadu in kuntum sadikin. And they have been asking this again and again. This is not here. Again in the Quran, we find this is when will this wad, that means when will this punishment, when will this promise of punishment come if you are truthful? This is what they've always been asking that when prophets say that you will be, you'll be punished, they say, when will that come? What they don't realize is that Allah can easily Allah has punished in the past. But Allah does not enjoy punishing. Keep in mind, Allah is not trigger happy, right? As America, for example, some countries are that they want to, for example, find somebody's wrong, they are trigger happy, right? That's not the case, right? Allah is not that, no. Allah in the past has punished so many people who have been destroyed and then Allah will not continue doing it that again and again. Because there is enough warnings have been given, right? He doesn't need to do that just to you know, please them or to show them. They, for example, are defying. Allah doesn't react on defiance. Allah cannot say, oh, because you are defying me, I'll show you. That is not possible. We don't do that, right? We, for example, let's say that somebody is doing a good job and then somebody says, if you really are sincere, then you know, show me this thing or you know, do this thing. No, you don't even have to say that. No, you don't have to prove your sincerity. Sincerity is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never, never in brothers and sisters, whenever you do good act, never prove your sincerity. Sincerity is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never prove, right? You just live on Allah. No? So it's prophets is being told that do not grieve, right? Wala tahzan alayhim wala takun fi daik mimma yamkur. Wa yakuluna mata hadal wadim kundusatim. 
قل اسا ان يكون ردف لكم بعض الذي تستعجلون نو ويل كم تو ذس ديسكشن ان ذا نيكست سلايد ردف از از نو يو ار توكينج اوف ذس بنيشمنت فيرس ات از جست بيهايند يو نو سم اوف ذا ثينجز وات يو ار اتس نوت فار الله بلان اف يو وونت تو بنيش از ردف لكم ذات مينز اتس جست بيهايند يو نو ان ربك لذو فضل على الناس ولكن اكثرهم لا يشكرون you see here is why does allah punish because in rabbak ladhu fadlin he is the possessor of all the bounties he is full of bounties right fadlin all in nas over people not over women tell them it doesn't muslimin all in nas walakin aktharahum la yashkurun they are not grateful you know sometimes i i wonder imagine if allah were to punish me the moment i committed sin what would happen to me because all of us know if i look at myself how many times know the billah i have committed sins and if allah would be punishing me at every stage what would i be just now i'll be completely a handicapped person or you know something if the punishment was there but this is just allah is full of fadl right full of bounty no other nas walakin aksaram la but majority of them do not realize they don't thank allah whenever for example at night as we appraise ourselves that what did i do today what wrong did i do moment you realize that wrong which you have done pause and just thank allah that allah you had all the right right over me as imam ali says do i come in that you had all the hujjat over me and i have no argument against you right but allah does not punish us thank allah that oh allah you did not punish me rather you gave me the opportunity now i can seek forgiveness i can do something better i can compensate for example if i don't wrong you no know, just thank allah for that now wa inna rabbaka la ya'lamu ma tukinu suduruhum wa ma yu'linun again you can see how quran changes the shifts right in fact your lord knows ya'lamu ma tukinu what their chest what their breast what their hearts conceal ma yu'linun and even what allah they do openly now you may be for, for surprising of course everybody knows what is done openly right why is allah mentioning that for example allah knows the hidden and the apparent can somebody answer why do you think allah for example you say that allah knows let me go to the next slide so you know the translation the question is no you can see your lord knows whatever is in their breast ayat number 74 and whatever they disclose right so why do you think that allah is talking about that he knows what is apparent what is disclosed which even we know so what is so special about it can somebody try to answer this thing If, if we know for example allah knows the hidden that is understood that is something special right that is that is the ability of allah but allah knows what is apparent what they disclose right why would allah mention that the idea others may see or apparent but only <coughs> allah sees both okay only allah knows the hidden yes okay you are near what it perhaps could be that allah sees the hidden the way we see the apparent for him there is no difference whether something is apparent or something is hidden for allah there is no difference for you and me uh, there is a difference because there are things which hide those things so there are obstacles for us for allah the obstacle doesn't apply right so he says that he knows what they conceal and what they disclose there is no difference for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you with me Okay, we go back to the verse in Arabic. Bahan Allah. No. Then Allah says, you know, "Wama min nakhaybatin fi al-samai wal-ardi illa fi kitab mubin." Not only that, Allah knows about it, but this is all prescribed in Allah's book, right? So, how can they hide? No, there is nothing which is hidden or which is 
no, in 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 the heaven and the earth, except that it is, you no, know, written and already, you no, know, transcribed in the book. No, in the Quran, yakusu ala bani Israel, aksar al ladi hum fihi yaktalifun. No, now just as an example, although this Quran was talking to Mushrikin at that time, right? But he says this Quran also narrates about you no know, Allah bani Israel, aksar al ladi hum yaktalifun that. The, even the Banu Israel used to defer a lot, and this Quran actually exposes them. Now, if you look at the Quran and the stories of Banu Israel, so Allah says that in fact you know, it gives the narration about Banu Israel regarding their, their what differences. Now, this in fact, Allah says this verse is a consolation first to the Prophet, then to the believers. During the time of the Prophet, and then to the Ummah. In Nahu, that means in Nahu, that means the Quran. In Nahu, Lahuda, wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. Right? <coughs> Quran is you no know, a guide and also a mercy. And this you no know, guide and mercy appears also a number of times in the Quran. I did not count how many, but it appears if you just see. So in Nahu, Lahuda, wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. This is, and Quran is a mercy. Keep in mind. And you can see, for example, Allah says, "For Iza kuri al Quran, fastami ula, for ansitu laallakum turhamun." Right? When Quran is being recited, then listen to it. For ansitu, no, not only listen to it. Stop making noise. No, be attentive. Right? Laallakum turhamun. When Quran recited, stop talking. For example, in the car, if you are with somebody, your friend, your spouse, your children, you are talking. Switch off the Quran, right? Keep in mind. But yes, if you are working at home alone, for example, so you are doing dishes or doing something, you are cooking, that's fine. You can listen to the Quran at the same time because other somebody is not talking in between. That's fine. So inna hu the hudam wa rahmatul mumin inna rabda ka yaghdi bain hum hukmi wa huwa al azizul halim halim right azizul alim. In fact, Allah is the one who is going to judge. No. Between them, through his wisdom and through his no power. Yes, Allah is almighty, nothing can escape him. But at the same time, he is. That is it, that his knowledge will always be there. In other words, Allah will not going, is not going to judge us wrongfully because he didn't know about it. No, sometimes, for example, often what happens is that, for example, you find somebody has judgment against you, right? Whether it's a judge in the court, or even, for example, in a small you know, argument at home, or for example, amongst the friends or in the community, people say something about you. In many cases, I are prejudiced against you or because of ignorance. Allah is not ignorant about this thing, right? When He gives the judgment, He is fully aware. So, in Nahu, Azizun Ali, right? But Tawakka Allah, in Ala Al Hakil, no Mubin. So just rely on Allah. Just put your trust on Allah SWT. Innaka ala ala al-haqqi al Allah is on truth, which is a manifest, clear truth, right? So what about Allah? Remember I told you that if sometimes somebody argues, don't be grieved, no? Just have faith in Allah, no? Innaka la tusmu al-mawta la tusmu al-summa dua idha wallaw mudbirin, yeah? This is in fact, literally you can see it means that you cannot know. Okay, the verses will come later on. So let's, for example, go to the next slide and see the notes, right? They used to say that how can Allah, for example, bring life no, hereafter? So Ar Razi says in Tafsir Kabir that doubt in the reality of hereafter stems from doubting the power of Allah. If you believe in Allah and His power and His ability, then you would not question the Iraq. People do this thing, right? And there is a strong argument, as we said in Surah Yasin, right? Here is just one ayat you can see. Kul yuhyil marra. Oh, Prophet, tell them, because they were asking, how can there be life after that? Somebody brought a bone which was rotten, came to the Prophet, he took the bone. And then in the presence of Prophet, he crushed it because it was rotten. He crushed it and threw it in the air. 
And he says, oh, Muhammad, how can your God give life to this? So to, in that response, Allah says, Kul yuhyi alladhi ansha'aha awwala marra. Wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim. Just tell him that the one who created in the first place can also gain. Wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim. He is fully knowledgeable of all his creation. He has not forgotten about it, right? Alladhi ja'ana lakum min ash-shajari akhdar naran. Fa'idha antum minhu tukidun. Then Allah is reminding those olden days when people used to make fire by rubbing the sticks. He says, don't you take two sticks which are wet. That means from a tree which is wet, which is green. You make fire. Now, when the, when the sticks are wet, right? When the green, they're wet. And then you rub and fire comes. Is not water and fire. Is not wetness and fire opposite. If Allah can do that thing, why can't he not create life after that, right? وَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ أَلَا أَنْ يَخْلُكَ مِثْلَهُمْ He's not the one who has created the heaven, no, has the ability on creating something similar, right, مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَا وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْأَلِيمُ Do you see this question? وَلَيْسَ الَّذِي This alif is again question. Remember I told you alif of istifam, alif of questioning. If somebody were to say, no, no, Allah cannot, that is kufr, right? So before even that comes, Allah himself answers, Bala, indeed Allah is able. Allah is not only khalik, he is khalaq. Now what is khalaq? Like razak. There's someone who can easily create again and again. In other words, it's not that Allah was a creator in the past, but now, for example, centuries have gone by, he has not created, so he must have forgotten, as you and me forget, for example, right? As I age, for example, there are certain things which I could do, I can no longer do it. That's not the case with Allah. He is the creator at every time, and also is full of knowledge. See? In the ayat number 68 of Surah Al-Naml, the Mashikin said that we have always been promised that we would be raised. So why is not uh, is that, that not happening, right? So these are the myths of ancients, they say. Asatru Awalin. The response is in ayat number next 69, right? Where they are told to travel the earth to see the vestige of the guilty people who denied their prophets in, in ruin, right? Just see the ruin of these people, right? Allah consoles the prophet in verse number 70, right? Asking him not to be grieved. No, wala tahazan. Also, in ayat number five, six, you know, all these verses, you'll find you know, that Allah is consoling the Prophet in the number of places, also, right? In fact, Surah Al Qasr is a consolation. Surah Al Duha also is a consolation. According to you know, Allah Al Mizan. So there is a lot of time Allah consoles the Prophet. Let not your breast feel guilty due to their kufr and bearing others not to follow. You know? Prophet used to fall, feel about it. You know? Your Lord will decide between them by His judgment. And He is the Almighty, all knowing, as we said, right? But Tawakka Allah, in Rabbaka Al Al Khalki, Al Al Hakim Mubin, right? Just have reliance on your Allah. Put trust in Allah, for indeed His truth, right? Al Al Hakim Mubin. In Nakala Tusmi Ul Mota, Wala Tusmi Ul Summat Dua. You cannot make the dead hear, nor can you make the deaf listen to your call when they turn their backs. Now, this is quite, you should know this thing, it's spiritual, right? It's, for example, that when people who are being advised and again and again, even they don't want to change, not budge, right? So these are people who are dead. These are people who are deaf, right? And Allah says, Wama anta bihadil umi, right? Nor can you guide the one who is you not know, blind, right? Umi. And him, no? Those who are blind on their error, right? In tusmiu illa and you minu bi abaina for Muslimun, right? Be ayatin for Muslimun. You can only make only those here 
who believe in our signs and have submitted. In tusmi'a, in tusmi'u illa man yu'minu bi ayatina. You can only make them listen or benefit from the presentation. Those who believe yu'minu bi ayatina for whom and they are submissive to that, right? So it is important that always give in to truth. Once truth is there, then be submissive to it. Then you will benefit from things. There are people who just, you know, even if they're in a majlis and lecture, they are hearing, but they're not listening. No, they just close their mind to it. And that's why you see sometimes, oh, I sent my son, my daughter, you went to a majlis, you were so much inspired. Although you have heard, no, 10 times more majlis than your son or daughter, right? And for you, this may be a repetition, but even then it inspires you. And you don't find her me getting inspired. What is it that they who just close their mind, right? So Quran is telling us to the Prophet that no, Wama anta bi, no, he says, Inna kala tusmiu al mauta. You cannot make those who are dead to hear. Wala tusmiu summa, no, those who are deaf, no. no. Is that, no, is that, if they just turn their backs to you, no. The Lord will decide between them. God will judge in the hereafter about who is right, and it is not the duty of the Prophet to render judgment. Do you see? By telling Prophet that no, God will decide, it's Allah's work. Let's not do this thing. Even so often, for example, people are asked this question Will then Muslims go to Jahannam? Will they all go to Jahannam? No. Your first answer is, I'm not the one decides, God decides. No. Best our teachings that a person requires belief in one God, belief in the Prophet to be a believer and benefit from what, 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 what Allah is given. Now, if he decides to forgive that person or not, that is his priority. I'm not here to judge, right? So judgment is in the hands of Allah. Man. I will just tell you based on what we have been taught and what Quran says or what the Prophet Imam said. God will judge. You can see when Prophet is being told, that it's not prophet duty to render the judgment. So rely on Allah for their judgment and punishment. For their judgment and for punishment, rely on Allah. He will take it. And fear not for you indeed, stand on the manifest truth. You're on the right path. Don't fear about it, right? Mushrikun are a group of deaf and blind who do not hear and who have strayed, you can see. Just because they don't want to listen to the truth, you can see a Quran calls them as deaf and blind. Allah says, making one hear is guiding the person. No, that is what it means. The meaning of ayat in, in, in and arguments that put Tawheed and other religious facts that stem from it. So what he's trying to say, whenever you find that no though you be ayatina, that those no amin be ayatina, our science does not only mean the Quranic ayat. Doesn't mean, for example, it says everything about Tawheed and other religious facts that stem from it. All those are the signs of Allah. When Allah says that they have to believe the ayatina, right? Then he says, one who applies sound judgment and reason to the true proofs conveyed by Allah signs in the horizons and the souls, understand them and then submit to them with belief and obedience, right? Such a person is not dead, right? Not amongst those who are not no, among those who whose hearing inside God has sealed, right? People ask this question that why Quran says that Allah has sealed somebody's what heart? It's because they have argued, they become stubborn, right? Then a time comes Allah has sealed the heart. But in this case, people who, for example, you know, believe in Allah, you can find they are not whose hearing right God has sealed. Allah will open more. And I, I can promise you, if you were to listen to some of the very good lectures on Tafsir, you'll find always your heart, your mind opening up. No, you'll find spiritual pleasure in it, honestly. You will feel the spiritual pleasure, which is far more than any physical pleasure. For example, you know, in, in this world, for example, people get pleasure through food, through sex, through hoarding money, right? Those are physical pleasures. But if you were to experience the spiritual pleasure, that would be far better.
we have about seven minutes. Uh, I will pause for a question if you want. Otherwise, I'll complete this slide now. Anybody has questions so far regarding what we have covered? Okay, so let's continue. I don't see any question being posed. وَإِذَا وَقَلَ قَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا يُوكِنُونَ Subhanallah, this ayat number 82 is quite interesting. Because of the word دَابَة If you, after finishing this, after, after this course, when you go home, for example, when you just go, go back, open the translation of the Quran. You might have at home. Different translations, even if you go online, you can get a number of translations, right? Just look at the translation of this. Dabba means anything which is walking on the earth. It can be a human being or even an animal. But many translators, even Kuli Karai, right, who's been using it, he also has translated this as an animal. But you'll see what Lama Tawadwa has to say about this. We'll come to it, right? مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فَوْجًا مِمَّنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِنَا فَهُمْ يُوزْعُونَ Allah says that a time would come that from every community, يَوْمَ نَحْشُوا We are going together, مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ From every community, فَوْجٍ Just a group of people. مِمَّنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِنَا Those who used to belie our signs. فَهُمْ يُوزْعُونَ They will all be gathered, right? حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوا كَانْ أَكَذَّبْتُمْ بِآيَاتِ وَلَمْ تُحِيْتُ بِهَا إِلْمًا أَمَّا ذَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ no. That Allah actually, you can see, إِذَا جَاءُوا Then they will be brought to a place whereby Allah can talk to them. Kala is Allah. You will see in the passage, there is H capital. He said, Kala أَكَذَّبْتُمْ بِآيَاتِ Did you deny and belie my signs? وَلَمْ تُحِيْتُ بِهَا إِلْمًا Why did you not have full comprehension of the knowledge? Or what else were you doing, right? On account of that, what happens? They'll be in such a position, either because of horror or because Allah has deprived them, that now they will not even able to defend themselves. Allah said, A word will be fall upon them on account of wrong they did. They will not be able to even do not, they will not even able to utter. You can see they'll be speechless. Do you see that time comes in this world, for example, if you go to an atheist, what about atheist? Sister who's not wearing hijab, a brother, for example, who does give birth, a brother, for example, does something wrong. You ask him why you're doing it, oh, they can give you a long lecture. Long lecture. No, just saying this thing. A time would come, you can see Allah says, Okal Kaulu alayhim. A word will befall upon them imazalam on account of wrong they were doing. Fahum la yantikun. They would not be able to even speak. Alam yaraw anna ja'alna layla liyaskunu fihi wa nahara musira. Did they not see the night in which they can rest, take rest, and in the night and the day which is so bright? Inna fi zalika la ayatil no. Even in those just day and night, which everybody, every one of us observe every day, right? The changing of day and night, Allah says, these are the signs for those who believe and submit, right? Right? Let's look at this uh, because we only have three minutes. I just would like you to look at this discussion about Ayat number 82, which is quite interesting. I'm talk, talking about the resur resurrection, Lama Tawadwai says, now the surah ends by warning and giving glad tidings as it started in the beginning, right? The plural pronoun in verse 82 referred to the Quraysh, them, alayhim, right? And to the Ummah of the Prophet. The words fall upon them in verse 82, 85 means God's punishment shall be fall upon them because the disbelievers had no faith in our signs. We shall bring out for them a creature, Dabba, from the earth who shall tell them. Describes one of the extraordinary signs promised in verse, you know, 
So Allah, Imam Muhammad Wa Ta'ala says that this is an extraordinary sign. A creature will be just brought forward, right, to talk to them. This is an extraordinary sign. Bring out from the earth means bringing to life after death. The word Dapa is a living being that moves on the earth, could be a human or animal. So Muhammad Wa says no other verse explains what is meant by this creature that God shall bring and will speak to people. We have no idea what it is, its qualities, how it will come, and, and what it will speak. We don't know anything. We don't have reports. It is meant to be a mysterious expression. For Sirun have proposed many views that cannot be supported by any solid evidence. You see this scholar, see his integrity, subhanAllah. No, such a great scholar admits his inability to explain just the word Daba within this verse. He doesn't shy. Rather than writing something wrong and misleading the people, right? No, no. He clearly says that we don't find this kind of way in the Quran. This is the only place this has come, right? No, that no, this creature you have no idea about its qualities, animals, human, how it will come, we don't we're not told. What it will speak, we don't know about it, right? It is meant to be a mysterious express, expression. And he says, other Mufasirun have proposed many views that cannot be supported by any. So he says, I'm not going to get into that. Do you see the integrity of the scholar? That is why, brothers and sisters, those who can read the translation of Al Mizan and comprehend, you should do that. If you cannot, don't do it because it's not easy. In my own experience, before I went to the Hausa, when I used to read that by that time, before I went to Hausa in 80s, mid 80s, by that time, I think number one or two, or, four, or two, one, two, three, or at least one or two times in English were out. And I could not understand. It was not easy. But if you can, for any reason, if you are blessed because you're reading some co complex things, you should benefit because this is a scholar of integrity, you can see. No, he's not fear that people say, oh, you're such a great scholar. You come up with this you know, big tafsir. You don't even know how to fit Daba here. He's not worried about that. This is his sincerity, subhanAllah. May Allah raise his status and may Allah give us the ability that we should also always serve. Remember I told you, when you do things sincerity, don't prove to anyone. Allah is fully aware. Questions? For beginners, the tafsir, subhanAllah, that's a good question. You know, as far as the Shia tafsir are concerned, the, the brief tafsir is an abridged version of tafsir by no, S. V. Mir Ahmad Ali and other That is the first. Then the second stage will be the same people. This has been done by somebody else. Their original. The original tafsir will be scholar of, of, the, of the about two. Right? Then the third stage, if you are still to finish that thing and you can comprehend, then I would, I would encourage you to look at enlightening. Enlightening commentary into the light of the Quran. Right? Then the next, of course, would be, of course, Al Mizan. Al Mizan will be 40 volumes in English, 20 parts have been published. This is if you read English. If you read, for example, Urdu, then I would suggest to you before before Amizan to read the Sinamune. So in that case, no. If you read Urdu, then I would suggest to you to read the Sinamune. Or for example, even before in Urdu, there is a still 
quote uh, Tafsir, which is uh, no, Anwar al Bayan. These are in Urdu. No. These are some of the things you can merit. Or you can also, for example, there are very good lectures by Sheikh no, Bahmanpur. Just go online and just uh, in Google, you'll find you know, Tafsir lectures by Sheikh Bahmanpur. In my own collection, I think uh, there are almost more than 60 or 70 lectures I have in my collection. There may be even more because I will not be able to follow up everything. So those are quite detailed and, uh, and in depth, you know. And that person is good, very good, you no. Know? So if you're, depending on your interest and your ability. You know? Number one and number three is online at islam.org. On Latin commentary and that uh, Arapuya's uh, a breach, you go to Islam. Org. Quran or no? You go to Islam.org, you'll get what's or Latin commentary and you'll get it. No, just go there, you'll find those things. Any other questions? But I can assure you, if you start benefiting from Quran Tafsir, there is no literature as rich as Quran Tafsir. It's very powerful, it's moving, no. I, I I would love to just do nothing but read tafsir and increase my knowledge. But of course, a person has to also attend to other things in life, right? Any other questions? <laughs> if there are no questions, then I will take your permission. Again, I would like to thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to conduct this course online about a uh, about, uh, review of the Quranic Surah. Inshallah, pray for us that we can continue doing that. We'll soon uh, announce another course, so you will know about it, Inshallah. And again, thank you very much for this. May Allah accept the efforts now.